In from the darkness. Good morning, chaps. I am feeling very rough. No sleep from. Why do I always crash the audio? No sleep from four o'clock this morning. Obviously, the excitement of getting this place open and other things in the pipeline. So, uh, yeah, bags under the eyes. The hay fever's not helping. I don't feel like I'm fully firing on all cylinders in the old brain department. And yesterday's disappointment with the audio didn't help things. I suppose I managed to uh, get by with that uh, bit of a bit of a Q&A kind of thing going on there, but I've checked the mic this morning. I think just the little connector came out the back. Unlucky, I suppose it happened. So, just a few things to do today to finalise the brew kit. We've got elements coming, but Gemma's given them the home address for some reason, so they're gonna end up there. So we might not get them here today. And then there's also some stuff coming from GC and uh, that should come straight here. Oh, saved by the bell. So this morning we'll get the tops on the pumps. I've got a couple of thermoprobes to stick into the, the tank, or at least, um, not probes, but thermal wells. Uh, I've welded the fittings for this. We've got a half inch BSP outlet that can go on the top that Andy from GC sent me. So that will allow me to throttle the outlet. And then I'm going to bring the other pump in and we're going to extend the cables because these are no good really. I mean, I do want them hard wired in eventually, but I don't know where they're going to live until we get the hard pipe work in there and then I'll change the cable accordingly. But if I stick a couple of four meters of cable on each pump, we should be able to have them pretty mobile. No issues there. So, fingers crossed we don't have any problems with the audio today and we'll see if we can capture some more of the development. We're getting really close, honestly we are really close. I'm considering doing a caustic brew this weekend, should I get all of these elements. So, uh, yes, it's tantalising. I can't seem to seal the cold liquor tank so what I'm doing is draining it down so I can have a look inside sort it out we'll figure out I mean it's just dripping it's doing my head and it's just dripping so I'm um, releasing all the water from the CLT now this water has been in the tanks it's got it's potentially contaminated because it's got caustics in there from when we've just rinsed through the tanks. The only reason I saved it was to run it back through again. But yeah, I'll release it. So this gives us a good indicator then of what we're dealing with in terms of the floor. So I know I've talked a lot, little bit about putting some drainage in, but if you look at how this is, the pattern of the water coming out here, you can see it really doesn't need any. We're very fortunate in the fact that there's a natural slope on both sides of the building on the floor which creates a valley down the center and all the water comes down into the middle here you can see it's not even going up there it's not coming across into the workshop it all sort of congregates on this lowest point here and then it's just a case of just shoving it down the drain so I'm going to utilize this water as well and push it around the floor a little bit and just help clean the floor from any footprint marks and what have you. Exciting times! We have a package from GC. I need to speak to Andy today actually and pay him for this. So let's move all this stuff out of the way. Cha-ching. So we've got clamp 
and O-rings, a three inch, I think so, for the element and something else. We've got the two inch RJT fittings. Oh my goodness. Look at this bad boy. Now this is a Brucey bonus, I'm guessing, buddy. Fucking hell. Look at that! Was this a three piece ball valve, do they call these? It's a one inch ball valve. That's going on the brew pump. Damn right, thank you man. And then we've got uh, some one and a half inch RJT males. Oh my gosh, what is this? This is another little Brucey bonus dude. That's going to make uh, for a good filter, that is. So I can just stick that. Well, I can replace that other one that I've made. You are a diamond, Squire. You really are. And in here we have... Yes, so this is the important part. So this is the pump filter. So what happens is... This bad boy goes in there like that. Oh, it will go in. And then, yeah, a seal and a clamp on the top. And then you've got like a, you've got a filter that can be removed, which will trap all your hop seeds and that kind of jazz. Well, you'll show you better when we get it on the kit. So what else we got? Oh, dude, we sent another one. Look at these bad boys. So we've got a big boy and a little boy. The handle for... This is the final two inch RJT butterfly valve for the last fermenter, because one of them doesn't have one. So that bad boy can go on today. Oh, he's got some plugs. What are these for? These must just be spares. There's a RJT, two inch RJT blank, thank you sir. And uh, these look like blanking plugs for your BSP uh, sockets. I think they are. So we could take the elements out and then fill the tanks and CIP them without the elements in. What a great idea. Jesus Christ, I don't know what to say sometimes when I get little extras like this. Oh, my, I know what this is. Dude, you really didn't have to, man. It's like bloody Christmas, isn't it? This is a stainless ball valve for the HLT. in here. Oh, he hasn't. Matey, matey. Check it out. Oh, I see beer brewing in my future. This is excellent, man. Now, just want to make you aware, folks. Andy from GC has just sent me these out of the kindness of his art. I didn't order them, but damn, can I utilise them. Thank you so much, mate. This is going to go onto the boil kettle, onto the HLT. That looks the nuts, doesn't it? That looks the absolute nuts. So I can get that old plastic one out and put that on the cold liquor tank. Right, we've got the half-inch BSP sockets, which I require for other bits and bobs. Just make sure there's no other goodies in here. Mate... You are an absolute freaking diamond. Look at it. Oh, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. Look at this bad boy. That is a proper filter, that. That's solid as well. Solid stainless. So I'm gonna take that other one off that I knocked up and replace it with this bad boy. It's a beauty, man. Right, let's get to it. Thanks again, Andy. Link in the description below if you need any stainless equipment, literally any stainless equipment, GC supplies. There you people. I'm feeling a little bit lethargic today, but something that always cheers me up after I've just spent an hour and a half cleaning all the vessels, 
The fermenters, by the way, are ready for the final caustic and acid. Then we can put beer in them. I've just spent, like, look how clean my hands are. Anyway, something that really does cheer me up is having an extra package come from Postman. So let's check it out. I've just been sent another one. That's two today. Hopefully the elements are at home as well. That'll be three. It's like Christmas. So we've got this bad boy. Whoever sent it will, of course, recognise it. Yeah, that's the address. Harrison's Brewery, Unit 1, rear of 108 to 110, Carrollgate, Retford. Keep them a-coming. So uh, we've got a little note in here. And it says... Hi Harry, I've only recently started watching your channel after Clements Homebrew mentioned that you were building a brewery in one of their videos. Well, cheers Kevin. Uh, your vlogs have quickly become a daily ritual watching the new brewery take shape. It's inspiring watching you rebuild your dream. I've been homebrewing on and off since my late teens and I'm yet to venture into all grain. Get it done. But that will soon change. I set up a YouTube channel years ago Damo Bruce 78 but never got round to uploading any videos so hopefully that will change in the future I hope so mate get on get on it uh, anyway have a beer on me I've been watched many of your videos I decided that you deserve a beer or two there are three beers in this parcel which I think you might enjoy keep up the good work I'll definitely keep watching. If I'm ever down Retford Way, I'll be sure to stop by the brew shed and have a couple of pints. Well, let's hope that day happens, Damien. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for now. So, what has he sent us? La -la. Very well packed, I might add, as well. So, we've got a Goose Island IPA, something that I'm familiar with. I've had one of these before. And then we've got, let's just move it back so we can see what we've got. And then we have a Crossing the Rubicon India Pale Ale. I've not had that bad boy before. Who brews this one? It looks like Beaver Town. No, Drygate Brewery. Okay, looks interesting. And finally. I've had this one before. Disco forklift truck, mango pale ale. Cheers, buddy. Thank you very much. Now, I'm almost tempted to just crack open this Goose Island IPA straight away and drink it. But I've got to pick the kids up. It's bloody three o'clock. So I'll give you a quick rundown of what we've actually achieved today. And uh, then we'll shoot up home, pick up the children, hopefully. We've got elements. If they're there, I'm coming back down. And hopefully I'm recording audio today. For fuck's sakes. As well as all of these wonderful goodies that were sent to me kindly by GC, I managed to get some of the fittings put together for the top of the good old brew pump. This is gonna be the water pump. So we'll have an half inch outlet, a three quarter inch inlet, and I know Andy sent me a big old two-part, three-part uh, valve, lever valve, jobby, ball valve. Bloody hell, my head's gone. So um, I'll see if I can put that on there somewhere, but fail that, we'll be putting just the half-inch one on, on here for the outlet. He also sent me some blanks so I can take these off and we can blank them up when we CIP the tanks. That's gonna be awesome. And you can see what we're gonna be able to use this for, I imagine. Andy saw me weld up this old tattered piece of uh, perforated mesh, which is all I had. So, you know, make do and mend, as they say, but it's gonna be this beautiful piece of work. Just look at that. And it's a lot longer as well, sailor. So we'll swap these out at some point. And then the plan is, this will be our first port of filtration out of the kettle. And then we've got the 7.5 micron filter here, which obviously goes into our brand new filter housing with one and a half inch outlet. And uh, yeah, I've also been on my hands and knees, scrubbed all these tanks and fittings, put everything in the same direction. So we've got all the handles to the right. Everything's nice and clean inside. There's no residue left anymore of any pickling paste. 
So these just want a final CIP session and then we can hit them with some acid and then they can just sit there. I'll do the acid just to pacify the stainless but then they can sit there until brew day which ain't going to be far away by the looks of it. Now one thing I do need to do is set up some temperature control for the HLT. So we're going to have to get some type of extruded aluminium heat sink to fix onto a three phase solid state relay and maybe stick on this board in a temporary project box until we get a control panel up and running. I'll see if I can figure something out. But other than that folks, got me keys, got me shades, even though it's not sunny it keeps the pollen out of my eyes and uh, yeah, we'll get the kids. Let's go. They have arrived. Right, I'm not in my scruffs because we picked the kids up. Come on, damn, you're all right, sweetheart. But uh, <coughs> I couldn't help myself but come straight down here and open this up. Are you riding past Dabs? You can ride past sweetie, it'd be funny. Good <laughs> case. So I couldn't help myself but come down, get them unpacked, make sure they're not damaged, and try them out for size essentially. Pretty much got everything in place. Oh well, they're certainly well packed. I don't think I have to worry about these being damaged at all. Nice, nice. So you see what they've done, little cabs? They've packed them in wood so that the elements don't get bashed on the floor. That's clever. Clever, clever, clever. Okay. Yeah, let me do it, darling, I don't miss. Yeah. Now, I went for the brass ferrules on these because the stainless steel ones were an extra £200 an element, which I can't afford. Look at that. Just want you look at it. But what we're going to do, we're going to take them out for CIP, and that means that we can just sit the, the the immersed length, if you like, the bit that's going to have the crud on, in some caustic or acid, doesn't have to touch the brass. It's like either aluminium or zinc housings by the looks of it. So just bear in mind what we've done here is the minimum amount possible to get ourselves operational. Then we can start to innovate in the future and when we've got spare money, or even just any money, we can, uh, we can put some of that money back in and get some new upgraded elements or maybe we'll even build a bigger kit, who knows. Folks, what I've done here is wired this element up just to show you before we uh, end the vlog for the day. And this is wired up in a delta configuration because what we've got here, if I bring you in a little bit, is the most important wire the earth attaches there to the housing, and then we've got three lives line one, line two, and line three grey, brown, and black, which means that all these lines come in and their return path is this triangle here. Now if we we're going to have a star configuration we'd bring a neutral line in so we'd have five core cable and we'd connect the neutral to where that blue dot is so if one of the heating elements fails then the other two can still operate 
in theory and their path back to ground would be via the neutral cable but in this instance we're not going to run the neutral so we've just got the three lines connected in that fashion to make up a delta configuration for the three phase. So I'm going to go ahead and close up this uh, enclosure with the gasket provided and we will revisit the other two elements tomorrow. This one is not going to have a plug on the end because it's going to wire up to a three phase solid state relay which we're going to control with a PID so I need to mount this in a project box on the other end of this cable quite simply just connect to the three lines like so and then the earth which is there the earth will also be joined to an earth rail which will run on then to the plug so make sure that the earth is connected I've earthed all of the fermenters as well just to be on the safe side everything in the brewery is grounded with an earth wire so you can't be too careful with this but yeah it's just going to run through a simple PID and the boil kettle elements they're going to be switched manually for now but once we expand and improve we'll wire that via a PID also and build a nice big control panel but just for getting us off the ground not needed so there we go brief explanation of the wiring and we'll come back and revisit it tomorrow we'll see you then